Tiger Woods, obviously, me growing up, the age I'm at was my idol. We all looked up to him when he played. And one of the things I learned when I was probably in like late middle school, early high school, starting to, in my mind, get serious about playing golf, was him talking about how to hit the nine ball flight windows. So when I was that age, I did a lot of playing. I did very little practicing and very little short game practice with, gosh, I wish I could go back and, and putt and chip a little more. But the one thing I did do when I was in the range was practice the ball flight windows. And there's nine of them he did. There's low draw, medium draw, high draw. Low straight, medium straight, high straight. Low cut, medium cut, high cut. All right guys, before we dive into today's video, which I'm super pumped about, I've been wanting to make this for a long time. Now that we're indoors and you can see ball flight, you're gonna get to watch this. I know you're gonna really enjoy it. Uh, before we dive into that, today is day one of our Father's Day free for all special to Cagorno Golf. Com. What that means for you is you get to try your first lesson for free and we threw in a special bonus bundle where you get the four most important master classes that we've ever made completely free to try them out. These are four master classes that give you literally everything you need for the rest of your life for your entire practice plan. I absolutely love them. So your first lesson's free. You get all four of those master classes free. You get a 14 days to try it out and your first lesson it's free, so you get to try before you buy. I'm just asking you to try this out. I know that I could really help you with your game, but I need the chance to do so. And I understand maybe you haven't done online lessons or you're a little skeptical, you're not sure, I completely get it. So I wanna remove all of the risk there for you so you get to try this out risk-free. So if you click the link down below, cagornogolf.com backslash free trial, click that, you're gonna see all the details. This is gonna run today through uh, June 19th. So if you're interested in that, uh, go ahead and, uh, and click that and hope you enjoy today's video. All right guys, so I've been waiting to do this video for a long time. Now that we're indoors, we have TrackMan, we have numbers, we have the ball flight pattern. It's finally time to do the video about what Tiger Woods taught me and that's how to hit the nine ball flight windows. It's gonna be a fun video. We're gonna talk through how to hit the different curves which is so important for your ability to be able to find middle when you go play. Your ability to self-correct when you're out on the golf course, especially day to day, is gonna be one-to-one -one with your ability for your brain to know how to hit the different ball flights. So like, let's say for example, you go play and you hit pulls and fades. Well, if your brain doesn't know how to hit pushes and hooks, the opposite end of the spectrum, you don't know how to fix it, right? The players that I have who know how to hit all the different ball flights know the feels they need to find middle, and that's so important. So this video isn't about you going on the course and having to curve it different um, on every hole. In fact, I think playing one curve is a really smart way to play, but you have to be able to self-correct, okay? So Tiger Woods, obviously, me growing up, the age I'm at was my idol. We all looked up to him when he played. And one of the things I learned when I was probably in like late middle school, early high school, starting to, in my mind, get serious about playing golf, was him talking about how to hit the nine ball flight windows. So when I was that age, I did a lot of playing. I did very little practicing and very little short game practice with, gosh, I wish I could go back and, and putt and chip a little more. But the one thing I did do when I was in the range was practice the ball flight windows. And there's nine of them he did. There's low draw, medium draw, high draw. Low straight, medium straight, high straight. Low cut, medium cut, high cut. And I wanna talk through how to do all of these and in particular, like I mentioned, how, how, how you wanna find middle. Now, there's lots of ways to create different curves. What I wanna talk about here are really two parts to, the, um, to doing it. One, being the setup and how the setup changes and two, being in particular the follow through. So by changing and tweaking your setup and your follow through, you can change your ball, flip, literally ball to ball, which I'll show you. So I'm gonna hit what I, I got a seven iron in my hand. I'm gonna, we're gonna go through all nine windows. I'm gonna hit my stock shot. Now, my stock shot with a seven iron is typically kind of a medium to high draw pattern. So it's easier for me traditionally to do the draws because like if I just don't think and I swing, that's what happens. It's a little, it takes a little bit more work for me to do the fades. You might be on the opposite end. It might be easy for you to do the fade, take a little bit more work for you to do the draw. Th that's perfectly okay. So uh, for sure what I wanna do is at least hit the, the draw and the fade portions, those six, six windows. So, Let's see my stock uh, seven iron here. Just do kind of a normal swing. So when I'm setting up for a normal swing, you know, it might be kind of a five yard draw pattern. That would be traditionally what I'd be looking for for my stock shot. So that's kind of normal for me. 
right, you can see kind of a high um, little draw. The ball curved 18 feet to the left, um, 21 with the dynamic loft. The ball went about 100, just over 100 feet in the air. That's about normal for me. Club path, uh, 2.4 to the right. Face was 1.9, closed. H high draw, right, I would take that. It's probably 10, 10 feet to the left of the target. So if I wanted to get the ball drawing more, okay, keeping in mind my normal draw is 18 feet. So let's say I wanted to draw more and I wanted to go low, medium, and high. Let's just get the ball curving right to left more. What would I do? I would change my setup and my follow through. So if I'm gonna play a ball that curves 30 feet to the left, let's say maybe 10 yards or more, I need to aim to the right. If it's gonna curve 30 feet left, I need to make sure it starts 30 feet right. How do I make sure it starts 30 feet right? What I like to do is point my club face at setup where I want the ball to start. So I'm going to point my club face on a line that's about 30 feet uh, to the right, kind of the inside of those trees out there. And what I'm going to feel like I do is just kind of match my feet to that line. Now some people like to close the club face at setup and do that and that's fine. That helps close the face to path. You can do it. Because I already hit a draw, I don't really need to do that. So I'm going to start my club face 30 feet right. I'm going to close my stance. Now part two, which is important, is controlling the follow through direction. So as a right handed golfer, if I want the ball to curve the most to the left, I would have the club head going high and right in the follow through. And I wouldn't be shy about the toe getting in front of the heel. OK, I wouldn't be shy about letting the toe release a little bit in the follow through. So this should be the like big high draw pattern. Let's just do kind of a, um, let's do a normal draw, but kind of bigger than normal um, for me. So just a stock height draw, but more curved than normal. Let's see if I get that to curve. Okay, so there I got the push part. I didn't quite get the curve compared to normal, right? So I got the club path more to the right. I didn't quite have the face closed enough to the club path. So the ball only curved 21 feet. You see it went a little bit higher than normal. Let's see if we can get one curving a little bit more than that. So club face, I'm going to point to the right. Feet go with it. I'm going to feel that club exiting to the right. Let the toe pass the heel a little bit more. Let's see if we get that curving. There we go. Okay, so that's more what I was looking for. 28 feet there. It's about a 10-yard curve. 112 in terms of uh, how high I hit it. See the club pass six to the right. Face is closed to the path. You know, for like a stock pattern, you wanna have that club face about half of what you have the path there. So six with the path, 2.6 with the face is good angle with X neutral. So that would be how I'd be looking to curve it. Now, what if I wanted to do like what Tiger does, imagine he can hit it low, medium and high. Imagine going to play and you've got good enough ball control. You can not only curve it right to left when you want, but control the heights, right? But you gotta practice to do that. Let's start with the high one. So I hit that 112 feet in the air with 21 dynamic loft and my angle attack was four down. Now, if I wanted to hit it higher, the main thing I'm doing is trying to change my angle of attack. So I'm gonna feel the club head going to the right. I'm gonna really feel in the follow through that the club's going higher than normal, higher than normal. And I'm gonna feel as though I'm more picking the ball off the turf. So I want my angle of attack to come down from four my dynamic loft might go up a little bit and I want to get the height, let's say over 120. So to hit it higher, to do the draw, I'm still doing the club face pointed right, feet to the right, feeling the club going high and right. But now I'm really feeling it go high. My head feels like it stays back a little bit and I'm trying to shallow out the angle of attack. So this will be the high draw, high draw version. So I think I got the height part. Let's see if we got there. There we go. So high draw off the screen. So we got 135 feet in the air. Ball curve 32 feet, so about 10 yards. See, my dynamic loft went up from 21 degrees to 24. So I added a little bit of loft. Okay, still de-lofted relative to a normal 7 iron, but went up a little bit. Had my club path well out to the right, because I'm aiming to the right and had the face close to the pass. So that's what I want to do if you want to hit it higher than normal. The angle of attack should come down, so you shouldn't hit as far down on it, right? All things equal. Now, let's say I still wanted to do the draw, but I wanted to hit a lower shot. So what would make it go lower is those same numbers. Now, let's say I wanted to get it under 100 feet. 
I want the dynamic loft to come down more low 20s, and I'm going to have the angle of attack more down. So if I hit it lower, I'm going to lower the loft, but I'm also going to feel like that club head travels a bit more down into the golf ball. Still doing the same things for the setup to make it curve. Club face pointed where I want to start. And if you do that, and the ball's not curving to the left enough, you can have your club face a bit more closed to the setup position than I do. Like perhaps in the beginning, let's say you want to have a five yard draw. Maybe you, know, you start with pointing your club face about five yards right, and maybe point your club face about 10 yards right. So the face is a little bit closed relative to your feet line. That would be perfectly fine. Lots of ways to close it. So the low ball, I'm gonna do the same aim right. Ball, I'm gonna move back in my stance a touch. This face is gonna feel a little bit more shut for me at setup. And I'm gonna feel like I, I'm not shy about having that club head work more down into the golf ball. So this is the low draw. So I felt like I was hitting more down on it. So there's kind of the straight push. I didn't get the ball to curve as much as I wanted. The dynamic loft came down good. Height was still a little bit higher than I want. And you see the angle of attack was good. So I got most of it. The club face the path was about neutral. So I didn't close the face enough. How would I close the face more? Well, I could close it more at setup like we spoke about. I could close it more on the way back or I could close it more down on the way through. I, I personally like to feel like I'm closing it kind of more through the ball. That makes some people nervous, that's okay. That's what I like to feel. I like to feel like I'm closing it through the ball a little bit more. So let's do that again. Let's see if we can get the height under 100 and, and get the ball curving a little more. So I, a little bit more down with the angle of attack, a little bit lower loft and get that club face. I'm really hitting down on it and letting that club face close a little bit. So I'm gonna close it a little bit more at setup I'm going to close it a little bit more through the hit, low draw. I felt like I closed it down pretty good. There we go. Okay, so still not quite as low as I would like to. <clears throat> I can still take that a little bit lower at 102 and get that down. But you can see still the differences now. I was able to close the club face a little bit better there. Okay, so the ball drew back 19.2, 4.8. Let me, let me give that one more go here just to see if I can I get that lower than that, I think. I'm gonna move the ball more back, not be shy about letting my head go forward, hitting down on it. Let's see if we can play a little lower than normal. Okay, I think I got that one better. There we go. Okay, so 90 in the air, right? Not quite as much curve, but still a little bit of draw to it. And in terms of the follow through, you know, the direction you swing the club will control the curve. So the more I swing to the right, that's gonna to wanna to have it curve more to the left. The more I swing to the left, it's gonna to wanna to curve more to the right. But also the height of the follow through is gonna control some of that. So if I feel like the club head, hands, and arm that go real high on the way through, that's gonna hit the highest shot. That's like a, a Greg Norman, Jack Nicholas, right? Hit the ball all the way in the air. If I wanna hit it lower, like on that one, I'm gonna feel like the arms, hands, club work lower on the way through, not so high on the way through. So the height, of the arms on the way through is also gonna control that. Okay, so the opposite end of the spectrum, which is hitting, I'm gonna skip the straight balls, just assume I can do dead straight, low, medium, and high, and let's go into the fades. Now the fades for me are more difficult because my stock swing is a draw, but we'll see what we can do here. Now, if I wanna just hit kind of my normal medium fade, I would just do the opposite of the draw. I would set up with my club face a little bit to the left, so, let's just say five yards left, and I'd set up with my feet 10 yards left. So for the draw, I don't really need to close the face at setup because I close it so well in swing. But because of that, when I do the fade, I need the help. I need to have it open at setup a little bit, okay? So I set my club face up open relative to my feet line. Club face is five yards left, feet are 10 yards left, so I feel like the toes behind the heel. All else equal, ball position a little bit more forward helps the fade. Ball more back helps the draw. So I'll go a little bit more forward with the ball position. Toes behind the heel, and I'm really feeling like the club and hands are going low left, and I'm feeling the toe stay to the right of the heel, like I'm keeping the face more open. So you see the stance line's open, the club face is open, and I'm gonna feel the club and arms and hands going low left. I don't know if I got that one curving back. All right, so that's not bad for me, okay? So I got the path 5.9 left. The face was only 0 
So kind of a straight pull to the left, not a terrible shot when you're trying to hit a fade. 122 in the air, dynamic loft 23 for me is pretty neutral. Let's see if I can do that again. So when, when I see that and the face isn't open enough, I'm gonna keep the setup the same, but I'm really gonna feel like on the way through that I hold that club face more open than normal, like much more passive. That's not really gonna happen. I just want it to close less. So let's try the fade again. That one I think I got pretty good. There we go. So that's a better kind of stock fade shot for you to see. 120 in the air. Notice the dynamic loft's a little bit higher, okay, than my stock shot. So that's at 25. And that's because I have the face more open. Face more open adds a little loft. That makes it curve more to the right. Face to path was 3.8 open. Normal angle of attack, about 10 yard curve to the right. Now, if I wanted to go even higher than normal, what would I do? I'd do the same piece as I needed with the draw in terms of the height. I'd have the ball more forward, maybe head back, really try and pick it with the angle of attack and feel like the club head's gonna exit a bit higher as it goes to the left. So I still need those fade fields. You know, stance is open, face is pointed slightly open. So face five yards left, feet 10 yards left. I'm gonna feel the hands going low left, feel like the face stays open, but I'm gonna feel like I pick the ball off the ground and I let the hands go higher into the follow through. This will be the high fade. Okay, there we go. So that ball curved even more, right? So I over curved that a little bit. That's probably about 20 yards. You see it went 120 feet in the air. Didn't strike that quite as solid. So only carried 167, but you see the loft is higher and the angle of attack is lower. This is the hardest shot for me. This and the next one, the low, the low cut ain't the easiest for me either. So that's how I would go about doing the, the, the high cut. Now, if I wanna do the low cut, all the same setup piece. Remember, set up and follow through. Now, but the, if I need to hit it lower, I'm gonna have the ball more middle, not forward. I'm still gonna have the toe slightly behind the heel. Stance is still open. I'm still gonna swing it low left. I'm still gonna feel like I keep the toe right of the heel, so I don't have as much face rotation. But now I'm gonna really feel like I increase that angle of attack. I like to increase my angle of attack to change the height of the ball. So I'm gonna get that angle of attack up, hit more down on the ball. Ball's more back. I'm gonna feel like I have a little more weight forward, hit down on it, but I'm gonna feel like my arms and hands definitely working low left for me compared to normal. Feel like I pulled that off. Okay, so for me, that's good for me. Okay, the low cut for me is not always in the arsenal. So 199 feet in the air, Still got it to go full distance. You see how the dynamic loft came way down. So the loft on the club being lower obviously makes that height of the ball go lower. Got the path nicely to the left, face a little bit open, and then I hit more down on it. Now, this is what I used to practice when I would go out onto the range when I was in that middle school, high school. And what it enabled me to do, I still basically, when I play, draw every single ball. I like to draw my irons and fade my woods, but assuming I'm hitting a seven iron, I'm gonna hit a draw 99% of the time. So I'm not saying, again, I need to go on the course and do this, but guess what? The fact that I know those feels, if I go play and I start overhooking it, I just add a little, couple of those little fade feels, and, I, and now it goes from overhook to just baby draw. If you're going on the course and you're overdoing the pulls and fades, add, add a little bit of the draw elements in, and that'll get you to neutral. So when you go practice, give this a try. Obviously, it's nice when you got the track man, the ball flight to see, but you can just play around with that on the range. And start by changing the setup and the follow through elements, okay? Set up and follow through elements. Play around with your aim, where the club face is at the setup. Play around with how far to the right or left you go and where the face angle is. There's no correct or incorrect. If we watch Bubba Watson hit, he curves it as well as anyone in the world. He got a lot of face rotation through the hit. Some people don't like that. Well, we would all take Bubba Watson's game, okay? So don't be, don't kinda, don't worry about how you get there, but um, use those pieces, learn how to curve it, learn how to find middle, and if you're struggling with any of this or struggling with contact, as mentioned before, first lesson free, our Father's Day special until June 19th. The link's in the description down below. We'd love to have you there. We'd love to help you with your game and just have you try it out to see if I can help. That's down below. If you have any questions about this or anything else, leave a comment down below. If you like the video, click on that like button helps. Clicking the subscribe button if you haven't already. It all helps and I appreciate you all watching.